uh, let's have a look at our first movement, shall we, please, tenors, and the glory of the Lord. And this is the first time in Messiah that the chorus is heard. We have that wonderful overture. We have those two glorious tenor, mo uh, tenor movements, the recitative and aria, comfort ye my people, and uh, every valley shall be exalted. Fan fantastic, fascinating pieces, which I could talk about all evening, but... We have to we have to uh, learn this wonderful chorus now um this is in three four which is this one two three one two three one two three one two three one two okay and it's got this lovely dancing feel yum da dun yum dum 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 so as we sing it's got to have that that lovely feel to it okay so as you're singing it try and get that little sense of leaning slightly into the first beat of the bar uh, uh because that's where the strong notes are so if you have a look at our first i'm going to go back to piano loveliest harp school is want to hear the actual note okay so our first entry is in bar 14 and just to say by the way i do hope if everyone can please follow along if possible on the pdf version that we're using for this course now if you were singing with us last year we we do have a new score uh it's been uh, very carefully produced it looks like this and the key to this one is that it has bar numbers on it as well okay so if you could use uh, our score we'd be very grateful if you're using another score it's just going i'm going to have to refer to bar numbers so we're coming in in bar 14 in our score this is page 10 uh, this is movement number four it's bar 14 and our first line is tenors after one two three one and the glory the glory of the lord and it's got to have this nice uh, jaunty sort of feel okay so let's just sing that and i want lots of galore okay every time this comes back let's sing it after one two three one and the glory the glory of the lord lovely glory okay nice tall sound and just notice as i'm sure you already have done um in i think it's only our seventh note and the glory the glory of those two words made one glory of of Okay, it's the same as when we were singing in the, the a cappella course, uh, and we had in the spirit of truth, uh, and so on. All right. Um, now, can I just uh, just double check something? Um, I'm just going to quickly check my uh, my thing here. Is everything all right? Good. I've got a slight error on my stream, but it does seem to be all right. As long as you guys are all right out there, that's fine. Good. Okay. So. Uh, let's go back to the business of the score now uh, after that entry glory of the lord you then set out tenor singing okay and you have this lovely what's called a melisma uh, and if you've watched my teaching from last year you'll remember that so this has to be sung with a lovely bright smile in fact the whole movement needs to be sung with a lovely bright smile it is after all a joyous movement okay so let's just sing that that shall be revealed so coming from the last note of bar 17 10 it's really after two or one two shall be revealed fantastic so every time you get those figures and the glory the glory of the lord you're going to put lots and lots of emphasis into the first note of each bar and then shall be revealed has got a big smile and think of it as almost like water cascading down a waterfall or something da, 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 yeah that to me uh, I think I said last year, you know, you have this idea that when you, if, if you're um, it, it bowing in reverence to a great power, you're going to bow. Shall be it's almost as if the music itself is bowing and, uh, and curtsying. Fantastic. So um, the rest of this first of two or three pages is just variants on those two figures and the glory and shall be revealed. Now we go into page uh, page 12 in our score in terms of bar numbers we're now looking at bar 47 which is four before b this is our next little figure and it's and all flesh shall see it together okay now well i want you to be really careful when we sing this one please everybody um just make sure we don't end up going and all flesh shall see it together Okay, and we, uh, when I work with singers, sometimes they put their shoulders into these fast-moving notes. In fact, it all needs to come from the diaphragm. And all flesh shall see it together. And as I'm singing those notes, then moving those, those quavers, da-da-dum, 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 I'm just pulling in 
on my uh, abdominal muscles here to just make my diaphragm just tighten a little bit to give a bit of support for those notes. And all flesh shall see it together. Should we sing that together, tennis? After one, two, three, one. And all flesh shall see it together. Fantastic. Well done. So just do your best not to go <laughs> on those notes. Keep them nice and clean and supported from the diaphragm. As there's stuff happening in caps, is everything all right? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Nikki. Um, good. So then at letter B, uh, we then come in, tenors, straight off the back of that uh, together as For the mouth of the Lord Okay, now uh, you're there in unison with the basses, and as I said last year, Handel treats us like instruments in this work. Uh, that's a very typical thing for a Baroque composer to do, particularly Handel. Um, he had a, a bit of a habit of thinking, well, well, you know, the, the violins can play it, why can't the singers sing it? Uh, here with brass, for the mouth, you know, big, big sonorous sound there, of the Lord, and then has spoken it. You sort of emerge from the clouds at the end for that last figure. So when you get there, please, that's bar 56 on Spoken It. Can you give me a nice bright smile as you sing it? Let's sing from For the Mouth, please, tennis. From B, ready, and... For the Mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Excellent. Do also please make sure, tenors, that you're being really, really diligent for me. And in the case of, for example, bar 57, uh, and there's another example in bar 73, you have a full bars note. Okay, you're one, two, three, off. And the T then is exactly, please, on the bar line. So it should be, Lord hath spoken it. On the first beat, please, of the next bar, on the bar line, and then it will sound fantastic okay very very nice indeed so what follows is then just variations on and all flesh shall see it together uh this this nice da da dum dum da dum which we sang earlier on again just make sure you're not overemphasizing it and you're not, not going and all flesh shall see it keep it light and dancing and in fact if you remember as we said at the start, if you can lean on the first beat of the bar just a little bit, it, it does make it easier to sing. If you sing, And all flesh shall see it together. Okay, with, a, with leaning in on that first beat of each bar, and that helps propel the, the momentum of the music along. Okay, um, so we've got a, a few more of those moments. Flesh shall see it together for the mouth. Um, now, there was one little bit... Uh, now, uh, can we move on, please, tenors, uh, to page 15 in our score? We've got this little section that starts at... Uh, we come in in bar 89, OK? And all flesh. And this is where the uh, handle has broken these ideas up and he's giving each individual uh, part a little fragment. So just be careful here um, as the altos hand this to you. In fact, let's let's go back a couple of bars. Sorry, sorry about this. Let's start at D, just so you can see. The mouth and the glory, the glory of the Lord shall be. And then... And all flesh. OK, I find that a, quite a hard entry to get absolutely right because it's just that tiny little fragment all on its own. You've got to remember to smile and get it in tune. So, and all flesh. Let's sing that together, please. All right, bar 89 after one, two, three, one. And all flesh. Excellent. What I might suggest, actually, ten is can you mark that the, the, the note on flesh is the strong note and the notes that lead up are shorter? OK, because what we usually have is and all flesh. OK, <laughs> and actually we need to keep that sense of dancing. So if we're aiming for the note on flesh rather than and all flesh, it becomes and all flesh. See if you can mark that in for me, tenors, and when we sing it through in a minute, I'd be really, really grateful. Um, OK, other than that, it's just variations on it. And then on the last page of this movement, tenors, and remember, if, you, if you're still learning this, do watch the teaching video from earlier in the day. Um, but this last page here is so much fun to sing. It's absolutely lovely. Um, it has to have a sense of flow, this last page. We've, we've been singing for the most part in one bar, sort of one bar phrase. But then at letter F, 
We've got uh, got this nice hemiola rhythm. And again, you'll remember from uh, from the videos, either from last year or from watching it earlier on, a hemiola is when we go from a feel of one, two, three, one, two, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And this is a holdover from the Renaissance era, from all these great composers like Bird and, uh, and Dowland and so on, who wrote all of these galliards and great dances, uh, where the cross rhythms were where you could do a, a, a little funky move on the dance floor. I mean, 500 years ago, but it was still a funky move on the dance floor. And here we have just those little uh, remnants in Handel's music. So we get this. For the mouth, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Okay, and there's that hemiola rhythm. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So when you're singing uh, that, that bar and similar ones, you're going to lean, please, into that hemiola rhythm. So let's sing that, shall we, from the bar after F. <laughs> Nikki's saying, Hemiola, anyone? Oh, it's a bit early for me, uh, Nikki. So, from bar after F, after one, two, three, one. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Excellent. I would suggest practice that p particular phrase because those intervals are particularly tricky. Uh, and it's one of those things, it's just that section just before the end. And I don't know about you, I can't tell you the number of times I've been re recording something, I think this is a really good take, and then I fluff something just before the end because I think it's easy. So always make sure when you're doing these recordings, you've practiced the end really, really thoroughly, rather than just, well, I'm going to give it a go and press record. Just a bit of uh, hard-earned advice there. And then, uh, for the mouth of the Lord, the mouth of the Lord, and then hath spoken it, a really big declamatory style at the end. Uh, hath spoken and a nice clear T with me. All right, so let's give it a go, tenors, shall we? Um, so we'll sing along. Uh, let's sing along with ourselves. It's always, always good. Bear with me a moment, and the glory. Splendid, okay. So this is us, and uh, so do please sing along. And this isn't the one voice louder. This is just, uh, this is a sing through with everyone. Actually, no, sorry, tell you tell you what. Let's sing it along with the score on the screen. My apologies, tennis. Let's let's do it the way I set it up rather than just making it up. So let's uh, have, the, uh, have the score on screen. You'll hear the one voice louder in this ear and the rest of the choir in this one. It's always quite good with these to wear headphones. And have fun, the score's gonna be on the screen. Here we go. And your flesh shall see it together too. 
O oh, thou that tellest good tidings to Zion, and this is just a little one. Um, so if everyone can please turn to this. This emerges. It, it explodes out of a wonderful, wonderful aria uh, sung by our fantastic alto soloist, by the wonderful Jennifer Johnston. And it starts with the sopranos. Then the bass is all, oh, and then we come in singing this joyous it, it's basically a peasant dance and if you're familiar with the music for example of beethoven with his sixth symphony which is all about peasants dancing or if you've seen don giovanni which again has lots of this sort of sort of feel lots of drones in d major this fits right in with it so have in mind a joyous celebration everybody dancing and singing and swinging each other around that's what we have uh, in our minds when we're singing this one um, again, big, big smiles, please. Everyone, throughout this movement, it's only, what, four pages? So, O oh thou that tellest good tidings to Zion, I really need you folks, if you don't mind, um, to, to smile as you sing, because I can hear it. Yeah, you know you can hear somebody when they smile. We've got fantastic ears. You know, when you speak to somebody that you know well, um, when they pick up the phone or when they ring you, you know who it is just by listening. Yeah, and, and, and you can tell what mood they're in, because you can tell when they're smiling, and you can tell when they're not smiling. So can we make sure when we're singing this one, big, big smiles. Now, let's have a quick sip of drink. Lovely. So our first entry is there just after letter H, as I said, the sopranos come in first, then basses, and then we sing. Oh, thou that tellest good tidings to Zion. Okay, so it is, it's a little version of the tune. Okay, just notice it's Zion. Those two notes are the same. Let's sing it for me. A word together. One, two. Oh, thou that tell us good tidings to Zion. Very, very nice indeed. Notice it's Zion rather than Zion. Okay, Zion. Oh, thou that tell us good tidings to Zion. So on these strong beats, uh, which is the uh, the first and the fourth beat of each bar, one, two, three, four, five, six, thou that tellest good tidings to Zion. You can see I'm making my mouth just slightly taller. It's a little technique, just lets a little bit more sound out at the start of each important beat. A little bit like a sort of choral equivalent of a, a swell box or a wah pedal on the guitar. So uh, give it a try. Sing that, that line for me one more time. Bar 108. Ready? One, two. Oh, thou that tellest good tidings to Zion. Lovely. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we then come in. Last note. You get the tune again. Last note of 112 is... O thou that tellest good tidings to Zion, arise. All right. Now, notice the tune finishes and you've got those little notes on the end. The arise. Please don't take a breath after, uh, after Zion. Just straight through. Just make sure you take a great big tank full of air during bars 111 and 112 while everyone else is singing. So let's just sing that together, please. Tenors, bar 112, last note, going on to 113. Nice deep breath and a smile. And... O thou that tellest good tidings to Zion, arise. Lovely. You can roll your R's. That would be greatly appreciated. And then... Arise. Listen to that. So arise, da da da, arise, da da da, da da da. Just say, just sing it for me. Da da da. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Da da da. -da. And again, and da da da. -da. And we'll do it slowly. One, two, three, four, five. Da da da. -da. And again, and da da da. -da. Now sing arise, four, five. Arise. Now what we be careful of is that we don't go arise and just sort of slide. It's, Arise, yeah, da, da, da. So let's sing it for now to ba 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 ba. Okay? After five. One, two, three, four, five. Da, da, da. 
Lovely. And again. Ba, ba, ba. Excellent. Now, arise. After five. One, two, three, four, five. Arise. Excellent. Well done. Now, uh, let's go on and have a look at the next bit. 116. Say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. There, note-wise, it's relatively straightforward. Um, try and avoid too much of the feeling of say unto the cities of Judah. OK, you end up with choirs with this, but when you sing so quickly and with such a sense of movement, you get to this bit and it's just like being smacked round the face with a wet fish. And we don't want that. We don't, nobody wants that, do they, really? So, say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. See the, see the shape of the mouth affecting the sound. So say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. We're going to lean on those important beats uh, and it's going to sound lovely. All right, then we've got uh, a behold, which is nice and straightforward, bar 120. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Just enjoy the breadth of that, particularly when you get to the E's and the F sharps, which of course are a tenor's bread and butter. So enjoy that little moment. Um, otherwise, it's relatively straightforward that follows. Let's just do the last little bit. And again, if you need some help on the teaching, it's all recorded for you. But this last uh, last phrase, which starts in bar 134, which is the glory of the Lord. This entry is tricky because you're going to want to sing the glory of the Lord with the sopranos, but it's a third lower. So what I do is I would follow the alto line down, just leading into it, which is bar 134. They sing the glory. It's that note. So if you sing the glory of, and it's the glory of the Lord. Okay, it's a little tip. And then is risen upon me. You've got to emerge from there to that note, to that note. Okay, in bar 136 and 137. So let's sing that slowly. Just the last note of 134, the glory of the Lord. Uh, to the end. Here we go. After five. One, two, three, four, five. The glory of Excellent. Right, we're going to go through that at speed. It is fast. OK, as I said on Monday, everybody, um, the, 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 I didn't get to choose the tempo of this movement. Uh, it was uh, Jennifer who wanted to sing it swiftly. And so we have a swift O Thou That Tellest. Just remember to take deep, deep breaths whenever you get the chance. If you've got two bars rest, don't think, oh, great, I can sit back. Think, right, I need to take a deep, deep breath and really fill up. OK, so here we go. Here's O Thou That Tellest with a score on screen. Sopranos, off you go. <laughs> Seems rude, but we have we still have one more movement. And this one erupts out of this wonderful recitative that uh, Caroline's going to sing for us. She sings, uh, praising God and saying, and we come straight in with our glory to God, glory to God in the heart. 
OK? And this first entry, it's marked in our score, unhelpfully, as mezzo piano. We're going to scrub that out. OK, we want a forte opening here. And remember, we want a glory. Glory to God. Glory to God in the high, tall mouth highest. All right, so let's just sing that opening line, please, tenors, as a little bit of a warm-up. Nice and bright with a big smile. Two, three, four. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Great stuff. Well done. And can I just ask you, tenors, in particular, keep the energy going to the very end of highest. OK, don't think when we're coming down from the G, oh, well, I can lighten up. Actually... The est is an important part of that. Then we contrast directly. You sing with the basses. And peace on earth. OK, and keep this quite light and quite plain. OK, not a lot of vibrato, not a big and peace on earth. Don't want that sort of sound. Nice and plain. All right. And peace on earth. And join the S to the next word. So let's sing that together. And peace. One, two, three. And peace on earth. Lovely. Well done. Then same note really for uh, the next section. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Tall mouth on the top note. Now if that A is, isn't comfortable for you. Uh, can I suggest, particularly uh, male tenors, drop into uh, into head voice for that? Glory to God in the highest. Okay, we want a lovely, pure, clean sound. Um, and so, if, if that's easier, then please feel free to do that. And then again, the and peace on earth, which starts in bar fourteen. And peace on earth. Quite a plain sound there, please, tenors. Thank you. Um, then just looking ahead, and of course, we will be singing this through in just a minute. Uh, the goodwill towards men. Um, I'm asking everybody to be quite heavy with the goodwill, as it were. Um, I'm often about singing through and making a lovely, long, smooth line, and we certainly will be doing that in uh, in the next few movements. But this one, it's there's nothing subtle about this movement. It, you get the basis. Goodwill, goodwill towards men. Man. Okay, so good will each time you're going to land on those syllables nice and hard for me. Uh, and then we have another, we've got a lovely top A. Of course, remember this is a Baroque top A. So that means it is a semitone lower. Okay, so if you're looking at that top note thinking, gosh, that is rather high, remember it's not quite as high as it appears, okay? So why don't we sing that? Let's go from letter B, just the tenor part. So after two, please, tenors, from letter B. One, two. Good will towards man, towards man. One, two, three, four. Good will towards man, good will towards man. Great stuff. Well done, tenors. Very good. Very good indeed. Um, now, we've got some more glory to gods and peace on earth. Same notes really apply to all of those. Nice and bright. Remember to smile all the way through this joyous movement, which is all about uh, glory and goodwill. Um, now, bar 33. Can everyone have a look at it for me? This is the bottom of page 63 in our score. Um, it is two before letter D for everyone else following in different scores. Now, at this point, when we sing along with the recording in a minute, what you'll hear is actually... The, well, what you'll start to hear is the uh, what I think of as the sticky tape and the staples that were holding last year's uh, choral parts together, because really it was put together in a very, very short space of time. The fact we managed to get it all out on Hallelujah Day is still, to my mind, a miracle. And so at this point, when you hear the altos coming, good will the tenor entry isn't just isn't there on on this particular uh, recording now what we're doing behind the scenes is we are working on something so that by the end of this week we'll have some really solid uh, uh, re-edited and in some cases re-recorded one voice louder parts to make sure that everyone has a really firm track to sing along with um, but for tonight just bear in mind that that entry won't be there on the on the guide track so we're going to have to make sure we sing it nice and loudly at home all right so let's just go through that bar so the altos come in and we sing Good will towards men, towards men. Alright, two before D. Sing for me after two. One, two. Good will towards men, towards men. 
Excellent. Very, very good indeed. OK, so just bear in mind, when we listen to that, uh, we need to sing that doubly uh, loudly because the, uh, the the lead part missed it. Now, uh, then what follows towards the end is just good, solid singing, good will, good will. Yeah, nothing subtle. Uh, and the last uh, last entry, good will towards men, good will towards men, keep it loud right until the end, and then let the orchestra bring the dynamic down as the, as the instruments stop playing one by one. All right, so let's go all the way through from the beginning. Now it comes straight in. So there's your notes, uh, altos and sopranos who want to sing along. Now we'll have the score on screen, and you're going to hear one voice louder, tenors here, and everybody else quieter in this ear. OK, so that note again. And here is Glory to God. Enjoy. Three, four. Glory to God. Glory to God. Done. And we'll just let the uh, orchestra play that one out. It's just such a lovely bit of writing. This is exactly what I meant. Word painting and scene setting as the angels disappear. Marvellous. So surely he hath borne our griefs, and and with his stripes, everybody. And I just see some of the comments here. Bless you all. Um, Nikki's saying, I, anyone's feel their heartstrings are tied to that violin's bow. Nikki, that's gorgeous. And yes, 100%, I'm with you. And in fact, oh, it's it's the violin, it's, it's the lines that handle weaves. And then he, he, he bumps up against another line and causes a clash, and then that clash resolves, and it's that sweetness of the resolution tied with the clashing that makes Baroque music just almost unbearable, uh, unbearably beautiful, I mean. And, uh, you know, the, the, the expression is the seamless flow. And as you listen to Baroque music, so the music of Handel and Bach and Corelli and Vivaldi, um, you know, you're listening for the fact that the harmony just proceeds you know exactly where it's going to go, and yet it's still a delight to follow it on its path. And this next movement, Surely Hath Borne Our Griefs, is a perfect example of that, because it is about as Baroque as it can get. It has this very, very dotted rhythm. Now, this style is actually known as the French overture style. Um, and if you if you know about your uh, Baroque music, well, you know about that, but if you've never heard it before, well, uh, Lully, the great French composer, the chap who famously used to conduct by beating a big stick on the floor with a, uh, with a sharpened point, you know, to give the beat, um, he came up with this style, or he, he was rather the, uh, the best proponent of it, uh, and it has this um, da-dum, 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 da dump feel to it. And uh, Lully, by the way, um, famously also uh, caught gangrene from conducting because he was getting really into a particular piece and put the uh, the conducting stick right through his foot 
and um, caught gangrene and died. First, uh, world's first, but sadly not last, conducting related fatality. And, uh, and he's now known for that, as well as the French overture style, which this piece starts in. And um, we then have these lovely, lovely long um, clashes and resolutions before the choir come in with Surely He Hath Borne Our Griefs. And this is the first of three sections in this movement. This first one is just angry. Surely. And notice it's surely, 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 please. Um, just to say, uh, as I said yesterday, those of you who, uh, in, in your everyday speech, those of you who have a, a rolled R, or a, you know, uh, the, those of us from, like, like where I come from here in the West Country, you know, the R, the tip of the tongue points towards the back of the mouth when we say it. Uh, similarly, those of you in the North American continent, you know, uh, surely, with, with a tongue, tips to the back of the mouth. Can we try our best to be unified on the vowel sounds on this, if possible, folks? So I'm going to ask you, and some of you this will be a bit unusual, but I want sure with the tongue flat on the on the bottom of the mouth. Surely. Surely. Okay, so it's sure a uh, lee. Say it for me. Sure a uh, lee. Thanks very much indeed, everybody. Uh, if if the, everyone's making the same vowel sound, it's going to really help with the intonation and the sound of it. Okay, surely. So it's really angry. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And the key word is our each time, please, everybody. Surely, surely hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. There's lots of people. Poor Lily. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first section, as I say, is just angry, okay? Then the middle section becomes a bit more reflective. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And so this is l much, much longer. So imagine that, that lovely thing that Nikki just said about our heartstrings being tied to the violin bow. Here, the heartstrings are tied to our long lines. And the more intense and beautiful we can make those long lines, the more we will tug on the heartstrings of everybody listening, including ourselves. So when you're singing that... He was wounded for our transgressions. Okay, sing all the way through those lines, particularly the, the note on wounded because you clash with the sopranos on purpose, and it sounds lovely. So each time you have an opportunity to sing through the note tenors, take it, and particularly our iniquities, uh, and bar 18, it's a big moment for the tenors. Enjoy that. And then in bar 19, the chastisement, the chastisement of our peace. More and more long notes. Let your voices soar through the texture, tenors. And that last wonderful phrase where... Mm -hmm. What I'm going to ask you to do is to start um, start the was on the B flat in bar 23. So that's two notes earlier. What you've got is peace was, a, and actually I prefer peace was. A. It's a nicer sound. Okay, so we're going to start the was two notes earlier and make it wa o os a pa on him. If you don't mind, please, everyone. All right, so let's uh, let's sing along with this one. And uh, so again, we'll have the score up on screen. Remember, it will all be uh, re-recorded and sounding fantastic. But uh, for now, as always, one voice louder here, everyone else here, and uh, we'll we'll yeah, we'll sing this one and then we'll have a look at the fugue. All right, here we go, folks. Here is surely. Surely, surely, he hath born. 
beautiful, wonderful, wonderful. Thanks so much, Tenors. And I have to say, that was a very, very nicely recorded bit from last year. Really, really very well sung. Fabulous. Now, let's have a look at the Fugue. And for those of you out there who are uh, still getting used to this wonderful Baroque style of music, the Fugue is perhaps the epitome, uh, or the pinnacle even, of the Baroque style. What you have is a series of lines that come in one after the other. There's a series of very strict rules that you have to follow when you write a fugue. Uh, the first is that you have a subject, so the first line to come in here, which is... I'm going to put the harpsichord sound on because why not? No, that's not the harpsichord. <laughs> OK, so that is the subject, the first subject. Also, as I, as I said yesterday, for those of you from the Mozart Requiem... <laughs> should be familiar. Um, now, so we have the subject. We then have what's called a counter subject. So the alto comes in with the, with the tune, with the subject, and the sopranos start this... And the counter subject is obviously is the kind of the opposite of the subject. So where the subject is moving, you'll find the counter subject will generally hold a note. And then when the subject stops moving, that's when the counter subject starts moving. So it, it is like a conversation. And then a third voice comes in and then a fourth. And all of these parts work and interweave together to create something that's called counterpoint. You might hear it called contrapuntal texture. Basically, it's a conversation between four equal parts. OK, quite often when we sing in choirs, the sopranos get the tune, uh, the basses get the bass line and the, the altos and, and tenors sort of fill in in the middle. Um, here, each part is just as valuable, just as important. And so we need to have that in mind as we're singing. Um, now, we come in tenors at letter A and with his stripes, we are he, e, 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 led. Can I ask you please to do your very best to not sing he? OK, a little bit as we were talking about in his yoke is easy. We don't want the, the sides of the mouth to go that way because that just creates tension. And then you get... Led. And it's just really, really tight. Tall mouth will give you a nicer sound. Let's all the sound... I'm going to go back to the piano. So we get... Uh, if we go from letter A. In fact, let's sing it together. Let's just try and make a... Eh. He rather than E. Let's give it a go. After one, two, one. And with his stripes we he led. Lovely. Tall mouth is always preferable when we're going above the stave. All right. And then. And with his stripes we are he led. We are he led. I think the biggest challenge with this movement is making sure you take big enough breaths to get all the way through the phrases that Handel has laid out for you. Um, this, for example, bar 21, there should be no breath from bar 21 to bar 28 when we finish. You need to take a huge breath. So if, perhaps if you could mark in for me, everybody, in bar 20, where you've got a full bar, and I know it passes in a flash, but drop your jaw cold breath and see if you can then sing all the way through to the end of the next phrase. Bar 30, we've got another... Now, bar 31, we start a particularly long tenor line. I'm not going to lie to you, this is one of the more demanding lines in the movement. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through it, OK? I'm going to play it and sing it for you. If you need to learn it, please watch the 3pm uh, premiere we put out. But let's sing it through together, shall we? If you're new to it, just follow it along. If you've sung it before, sing it quietly with me. OK, so we're going in at bar 31, after one. Huge breath. And one. And with his stripes we are he I can, I can feel, I can, <laughs> I can feel what you're thinking, everybody. Oh, that's really unfair. Hang on, what's going? On? Consider us the part that Handel trusted with that incredibly long line, and everybody else is hanging on our line there, tenors. Okay, so it's an honour 
to have a line that's as long and as complicated as that. Let's go through it, okay? We do have a few minutes to have a look at this. So, and with his stripes, okay? Nice and straightforward. Let's sing this first three bars. And one, and with his stripes. Great, and then it's, we are he. That's too much stuff to take on one. Let's do we are he from this. We are he. Just there, okay? So let's go from bar 30, one, two, three, four, from we. Ready? One, two. We are he. That's great. So that's the first note of bar 38. Now let's go from there as it's he. So from bar 38 with me, one, two. Good. And now we're going from 38, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 43. Okay, and now it's. Okay, one more time from bar 43. One, two. That's the first note of 46. And so from 46, it's... Okay, listen again. I ready? So it's one, two. Okay, and then, so we are now in bar 46, 7, 8, 49. From the start of 49, it is... With me and... And then the last phrase is oh, after one and one. Oh, okay, so let's sing it all the way from bar 31. Have a quick sip of your drink. <laughs> this is this is as hard as Masai gets, without doubt. Okay. So bar 31 tenors. Are we ready? After one, two, one. And with his stripes we are he. Take my headphones off to you, tenors. Great job. Very, very well done. And if you're still learning it, please take the time to practice it. Please don't feel bad. This is hard music. Um, but take the time, sing it slowly. Uh, and by the time you come to record it, it'll sound fabulous. Thank you, everyone. Um, now, there's there's more more of that. And with his stripes, we are he led. And with his stripes, we are he led. But that is about as hard as it gets. What I'd like to do, tenors, is to sing it all the way through. If you need to go back and revise any of the teaching, watch the video we put out this afternoon. Uh, and just make sure when you're singing this one, we don't end up sounding too happy, okay? It, it, there's a couple of moments where we go into the major and it's fun, and you sort of get to be, oh, I can, I am enjoying myself. Remember, this is the start of part two is almost without, almost without exception, there are a couple of exceptions, uh, it's just grim, okay? And so it needs to be good and, and with his stripes, we are he led, okay? Make it good and solid and full of tension. Okay, here we go. We're gonna sing it from the beginning of the fugue and I'm gonna need to just scroll through on my thing here. So bear with me a moment, everyone. So it's gonna start. No, that's surely. So I'm going to scroll through everyone and hopefully find it. So I now have the facilities to do this. There we go. So we're just going to have the last little, last few bars of surely. And then there's uh, Lawrence Cummings, who played harpsichord for us, coined a lovely term. He said, uh, all we want in between these moves is a sniff. <laughs> okay, so just feel the sniff and then we're in. All right, everyone. So the last few moments of and with uh, surely, and then we sing the fugue. Have fun. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
gone out into our lands this is page 138 um it's number 39 and as i said to everyone on monday this is a really theatrical movement this is uh handel showing well he's a very well-traveled man by this time you know he's been all around europe um he has a sense of you know that the world is a big place even though he'd only seen rel a relatively small amount of it he traveled further than most people ever got to travel in their lifetimes um, and so here we have this wonderful chord and the soprano saying their sound is and everyone else echoes which is why the first note is shorter it's just a lovely bit of word painting um, and everyone comes in singing the same thing it's what we call a canon um, and so the sopranos their so altos their sound and tenors their sound is gone out Okay, so let's uh, let's just uh, sing that from the beginning, uh, and we're going to sing to bar twelve. Now, just watch out. There's a top G there in bar nine. Just to be careful of, and some repeated notes. And just be careful, actually, on repeated notes. Into all lands. There, that's just before letter A. Singing the same note over and over again can be tricky and can also, uh, it's a tricky thing to keep in tune, believe it or not. So just be careful. Make sure you're smiling as you sing it. All right, everyone? The tenors are singing, everyone else is chatting in. No, I never doubted it for a minute. <laughs> okay, so let's sing it, please, from bar two. Please, everyone, after two, nice deep breath, it goes. One, two, the sound is gone out. The sound is gone out into all lands. The sound is gone out into all lands, into all lands. Into Splendid. Very, very nice. Now, you'll have noticed, as well as some leaps, they've also had some lovely, long, just very plain bits. And, of course, Handel has already shown us in his writing that he knows how to describe a landscape using music. The crooked straight and the rough place is plain, and so on. And so here he's doing the same thing. Whenever you get uh, the lands and gone out, it's, I think, to uh, symbolise the plains uh, and the flatlands as opposed to the mountains of the world. So sing all the way through those lovely phrases and enjoy yourselves. I'm going to have a quick sip of drink, everyone. would encourage you to do the same. And, uh, and bear with me, man. Marvellous. OK, so the first 12 bars uh, are, are... They sort of establish the scene here the, uh, of, of this imagined people setting out all around the world. And then tenors, you're the first out of port sailing off. And we sing at letter A. And there words unto the ends of the world. Unto the ends of the world. Unto the ends of the world. And so you can hear it's meandering up and down. Now, a couple of things to just watch out for before we sing this. As I'm sure you'll have noticed in uh, bar 14 and bar 15, E naturals, okay? <laughs> 
turning that into a complete major scale. Okay, so just be mindful of that. The, the notes on might might have a tendency to go a little bit flat. So just think up on those notes, and then just be super careful in bar sixteen tenors because on the way down it's E flat again. And I've got it written into my score that it's an E flat there in bar sixteen. It might help you to just note that in as well, everyone. All right. So let's sing. Uh, let's sing from letter A to bar 19, please, tenors. After three, oh, one, two, three. And there were done to the ends of the world. Unto the ends of the world. Unto the ends of the world. Great, thank you so much. And of course, you'll have noticed, I think, that we're not going, and there were done to the ends. I'm not emphasising every single quaver. It has a lovely shape to it. And there were done to the ends of the world. Unto the ends of the world. Think of one impulse per bar, which gives you all the shape you need and this lovely momentum uh, and keeping, keeping the piece of rolling forwards. Um, splendid. So there we are. We're now at two before B, tenors bar. 21 That's a little bit awkward Unto the ends of the world Of the world That fourth is uh, it's a little bit unexpected That caught me out a couple of times when I was recording So just make sure you're happy with that I, I ended up thinking of it If you think about that first note Unto the ends of the that is one semitone higher than the note you started on and world takes you back to where you started. So, unto the ends of the world, of the world. Okay, everything there is based around that D. Let's sing that please, shall we? Bar 21, big breath. Three, four, one. Unto the ends of the world, of the world. And then with the uh, sops and altos, the sound is gone home. Nice big moment for tenors. You know, if you have uh, a full voice G, well, you know, let it let it loose at that point. Enjoy yourself. I would suggest, if those of you that are singing from score at that point, remember, you know, top notes are, are, are best shared up and out rather than down to the score. OK, so we want a nice clear sound. The sound is gone out. Excellent. And then... Into our lands and their words and their words unto the ends of the world. Here, the thing to watch out for is these D flats. You see one of them in bar 26. That's that little B symbol just before the D. And again in bar 27. And this just makes those a semitone lower. So listen to Into All Lands from bar 25 to bar 30. OK, we're going to play from Into All Lands to And Their Words. So it goes from bar 25, 3, 4, 1. Into All Lands and Their Words and Their Words unto the ends of the world. Of the world. Oh, sorry, sorry. Now I did that before. It's a page turn and it's not very clear. It's an E flat. Let me do that one more time. My apologies, tenors. I played a C because I couldn't see the top line of the score. From bar 25, one more time. Three, four, one. Into all hands and their words, and their words unto the ends of the world. Of the world and their words. Okay. If you have the same issue that I have there, just make sure you've written it in. And in fact, the little tip that I always say to my choirs is when you've got the score, come sat and you've got a page turn and you've got an awkward leap, I always say write the next note just in the margin there. Uh, even if you have to draw a little sort of mini stave so you can see, ah, it's a fourth. Uh, and when you turn the page, it's not a nasty surprise. Uh, and then just this last little section. Uh, uh, sorry. And there was unto the ends of the world. Which again is a really nice phrase, keeping the impulses nice and light and making it nice and uh, nice and legato there. And then my favourite bit for the tenors in the whole movement is the last couple of phrases, starting in 35, uh, sorry, bar 34. And there was unto the ends of the world. Unto the ends of the world. And oh my goodness, when when I'm singing in that sort of tenor register, that just sits so beautifully in the voice, you know, it's all the way up to that lovely G. Bear in mind, it's not actually what we think of as a G. It's actually an F sharp, which for many tenors is that much more com uh, comfortable than a G. And then that wonderful pickup at the end. Unto the ends of the world. It's just so dramatic. So why don't we sing that, please, tenors? Let's go from... Actually, let's go from bar 30. Top of the page there. To the 
end and then we'll sing the whole movement. So bar 30, last beat. Nice deep breath after three. Oh, one, two, three. And the words unto the ends of the world. Deep breath, one, two, three. And the words unto the ends of the world. Unto the ends of the world. Marvellous. Thank you so much. Let's sing it all the way through, shall we? All right, so uh, this one, of course, you've got a, a, an entire bar and a beat and a half to enjoy before you come in, but it does move quite quickly, so just be ready for it. So uh, any stops are we here? Altos, tenors, and basses, there are your notes. I'm just going to change it across. It's going to start, and I'll stop it again. Yes, thank you. So here we go, from the beginning, nice deep breath. Uh, three, four, one. The sun is gone out, the sun is gone out, into all lands the sun is gone out. He trusted in God that he would deliver him. Thank you, Ian. I'm glad you thought that that was, that was useful. I mean, it really is the case that a lot of choristers, myself included, you know, you watch these rests go past, you think, oh, that's nice. And then it comes time to sing and you sort of think, oh, I've got to breathe. Whereas, in fact, if you allow yourself, you give yourself permission to breathe in plenty of time, it's a bit like those of you that have been on long car journeys. You've got to get up early in the morning and you've got to drive for hundreds of miles and so on. And it makes the difference between filling up on the morning when you've got a queue to get into the petrol station or filling up the night before, OK? <laughs> Those of us who pack the night before and who fill up the car, that's, it's that approach to, to singing. Be, be prepared. And if, if it really helps, I mean, mark it into your score when you're going to take your breath and be really dilig diligent about it and you'll find you reap all the rewards and all the benefits. OK, anyway, enough talk about going on holiday. Uh, let's, let's talk about he trusted in God that he would deliver him. Now, the bases lead out of the gate here. This famous he trusted in God that he would deliver him. OK, it's a really powerful statement from the bases. Uh, we come in. Okay, we're answering the bases. Um, they've sort of set the table out for us and we're coming in after them. Uh, and so make sure when we come in, we're not being very polite about it, tenors. Um, I said last year, if you were watching the video, you know, make sure you're frowning throughout this one. Most of the time, I ask people to smile and make things lo lovely and radiant. Here, I want to hear that dark tone. He trusted in God that he would deliver him. OK, I, I don't want us to go too far towards the operatic technique, which would be he trusted in God, you know, and so on, giving it, giving it some uh, particular character. But we do need a little bit, a tiny bit of a sneer in with this. OK, so, so make sure it sounds suitably unpleasant and beautiful at the same time. Uh, so let's sing, shall we please, in bar five. He trusted in God that he would deliver him. Be careful of the top G. Let him deliver him. Make sure we're, we're hitting that just beautifully and then coming down the scale. If he delight in him. Make sure that's all in tune, particularly the last three notes. All right, let's sing from your first entry, please. Tenors in bar five. After three, two, three. He trusted in God that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delight in him. 
fabulous, fabulous. Do you know what? I have, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to pause just for a moment because I've just seen it's William's birthday and I would hate for someone to be here and not have happy birthday Santa. And so just for a moment, tenors, and, and it's, it's, it's just such an, an honour to be able to uh, wish you happy birthday, William. So everyone, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear William. Happy birthday to you. There we are. At Baroque pitch, no less. And many happy returns to you, sir. Anyway, back to <laughs> back to the business of this wonderful, wonderful movement. So we've just arrived at letter A. OK, we've arrived there with, with plenty of oomph. Now, we start the fugue, what's called the counter subject. Um, and if you are a, a fan of Baroque music, you'll, you'll have a, an instinctual idea of how fugues work. You have a subject and you have a counter subject. And when the subject moves, the counter subject holds and then vice versa. So you get this conversation. And so our line, if he delight in him, let him deliver him. If he delight in him, if he delight in him. In him. You know, it's a really great line to sing. The only thing to watch out for, <laughs> and many more, um, the, the only thing to really watch out for here, tenors, is everything from A. You don't really get much in the way of, of, uh, of space until bar 20. It's a lot of singing. So what we're going to do, we're going to sing your line from letter A, if he delight, and I'm going to take you all the way through from bar 10 to bar 20. Follow it along. If you've sung it before, sing it with me and, and try your best in the short gaps we've got. We've only got one crotchet beat rests, but try, drop the jaw, breathe silently if you can to really fill up uh, fill up your lungs. Also helps before you breathe to relax your tummy, okay? If you're, if you're holding everything in, and you try and breathe into that space. It's a bit like trying to blow up a balloon while someone's squeezing it. All right, so relax your tummy, drop the jaw, fill up your lungs. All right, let's give it a go. From A, and so we're going to come in after three. Huge breath. Two, three. If he delight in him, let him deliver him. If he delight in him, if he delight in him, if he delight. It's a lot to get through there, a lot of notes. And so do please, if you can, fill up, particularly letter A. And then here's the trick. It, it, when you have a rest, so let's say you've, you've sung at A and you've... Um, light in him, you take your breath. You sing, if he delight, you've then got a half beat rest. Fill up. In him, let him deliver him if he delight in him. Do you see, I'm topping up my lungs, so I don't actually drop below about 80% until I'm well into that long phrase, and so you've got plenty of air to get through to the end, all right? Don't sip, gulp. The air, as far as I know, is still free. I haven't found a way to tax it yet. All right, so thank you, tenors. Well done. When we get to the, if let him deliver him, make sure we aim for the liver, please. <laughs> and want to make sure we get lots of lovely liver. Um, and then over on to page 106, this is bar 20. <laughs> So this is an opportunity for us tenors, and you get this this figure a number of times. If he delight in him, you notice this is actually uh, comprised of longer notes rather than all these rather short aggressive notes. So use the opportunity to contrast a little bit. We need light and shade. So make this phrase, if he delight in him, every time you sing it uh, with the long notes, make sure you make this nice and legato to, that is to say, smooth, to contrast with the shorter notes, all right? Um, um, okay, so it sort of it just sort of proceeds in that way. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything particularly tricky on these couple of pages. Um, there is the the octave leap at bar twenty nine. Trusted in God, let him deliver him. Now that took me about six takes to, <laughs> to get a decent sound. Um, the octave leap is a bit tricky. Now, obviously, those of you who are uh, are experienced tenors, you'll be fine with that. But it is worth singing it slowly, perhaps to bar, just to make sure the pitching when you go from the lower notes to the octave and then up again. Make sure that we're, we're hitting those pitches just right. Practice it slowly before you sing it all the way through. Um, and then... Yeah, it just, it proceeds very much in the same sort of style. It doesn't really drop in terms of intensity, this one. Uh, it's intense right the way to the end. Um, bar 35. All nice 
nice and straightforward. Um, so over onto page 108, this is now two bars before D. <laughs> So now this is a, a particularly long uh, little phrase, starting two before D and ending in bar 46. So it starts with an ascending uh, scale all the way up. And the thing is with scales, they're particularly difficult to sing, folks, because everyone knows what's happening. Uh, if you're singing a line that's jumping around all over the place, if you sing a wrong note, most of the time people won't notice. But if you're singing a scale, or even worse, if you're singing... Uh, three blind mice everyone knows what to expect and if it's even slightly out the ear will really pick it up so practice if he delight in him let him deliver him practice that a few times slowly maybe even to bar maybe even dotting it uh, and i know it looks easy but it's one of the harder things to sing in the movement and, and to get it absolutely right speaking from experience now at d we start a, a particularly long line that has a lot, a lovely melismatic moment. Remember, melisma is when you sing more than one note to the syllable. And if you see here uh, in, in bar 43, 44 and 45, you've got... Uh OK, so we have a, a, a bit of melisma there. We also have a sequence, and a sequence is where you get a pattern that you introduce and then you sing it again, usually up or, up or down in pitch, and then you sing it again. So... It's a nice, um, nice recognisable pattern, just needs a bit of careful work, careful polish. Try not to force the semiquavers. Keep it lighter at that moment. Why do we sing, please, tenors? Let's go from uh, two before D. OK, here we go. After one, three, four, one. If he delight in him, let him deliver him. He trusted in God, let him deliver. If he delight in him. Excellent. Now, you'll have noticed I snatched a breath in the middle of that. I took a beat out. I let the other tenors sing those notes. I took my time to breathe and I came back in. That's the technique I'd like you to use rather than snatching a breath and trying to get all the notes in because that, that doesn't sound great in the mix. Take, the, take a whole beat out, take two beats if you need to um, and refresh yourself before you come back in. Um, oh, we've got another lovely bit of melismatic writing, bar 49. <laughs> I mean, this, I know that this is quite demanding, but oh my goodness, such beautiful writing. <laughs> you compare it to some of the pieces uh, that you sometimes get in choirs, you get, you get three notes. I mean, there's, there's no doubt Handel had, to, had big aspirations for the tenors here. So let's have a sing through this. Remember, when we're singing light, it's a tall mouth, it's la rather than delay. All right? So let's sing, please, from 49. Huge breath. Three, four, one. If he did... Sorry. <sighs> Sorry, let's try that again. <laughs> Helps if I sing the right notes. One more time. Deep breath. Three, four, one. If he delight in him, if he delight, if he delight in him. Excellent. Thank you, Tennis. It's moving faster than that when we're singing, so if you made it through to the end, well done. Um, then over onto the last page, another lovely bit of melisma at 46. If he delight in him, if he delight in him, let him, let him deliver him. Now when you get to that last deliver him, that's where we get quite military and, uh, and quite forceful, and then these last chords, I want to hear every impulse. If he Again, no sign of a, a, a pickety third there. We end on the minor. Let's sing it, please, tenors. How are we doing? <laughs> I love the uh, the lorry. Let him deliver. Yeah, yeah, got it. <laughs> you can always trust the altos to come up with just the right emojis. There we go. 
I do wonder when we go back to face to face concerts, I should imagine that programs are going to have to have space in the margins for people to doodle emojis in. OK, so we're going to go from the beginning of the movement. The bass is coming. I don't need to necessarily give anyone else a note, but basses, those of you here, there are your notes. It's uh, let's have some fun. We're an angry, hysterical mob. <laughs> no change there, then. Here we go. Deep breath and we trust in God that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delight in him. If he delight in him, let him deliver him if he delight in him. If he delight in him, if he delight. Lift up your heads, O oh ye gates. And what I want everyone to do as they record this and as they sing along with it is to feel uplifted um, because that's what Handel intended. We have the, uh, the, 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 uh, the harmony suggested. Da, 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 it's all rising. It's all about lifting up and, uh, and, and having been so introspective for a while it makes a lovely change it's a bit like spring coming all right so uh the first first section is sung by the sops and the altos lift up your heads so you gates and then tenors we come in at letter a just before with the basses now um just to clear things up really hopefully once and for all the first four pages you ha on, in our score you see both who is the king and who is this king and we're singing who is this king please on the first four pages and then when it goes to four parts on uh, uh, letter C, it's he is the king of glory, um, because that's what Handel wrote. OK, so first four pages, if it's, it's this and the, we sing this. If it's just the, we sing the. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, OK, I'm going to have a quick sip of drink and I would invite you to do the same. And let's have a little look at your first line here. Now, the sops and altos come in like brass. So uh, whatever the notes are, um, we tenors. It's almost conspiratorial here. Who is this king of glory? This king of glory. Who is this king of glory? Who is this king of glory? So if you think, well, who is he? Who is he? You know what? What's going on? Um, I've just realised I, uh, I need to go full screen. Sorry about that. Um, 
So please make sure uh, that, that you don't over sing this bit. There's opportunities to sing very loudly, very shortly, but keep this one sort of, uh, you know, keep it close to the chest here. So let's sing that together from A, two, three, four. Who is this King of glory? This King of glory. Who is this King of glory? Who is this King of glory? Lovely. Thank you very much. The key word, of course, is glory. And we're going to aim for the glow. Thank you very much. And then at letter B, which is at the top of page 119 in my score, bar 19, you get the tune tenors just for a while. It's lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. And what I want you to do is to sing those repeating notes and uh, bar 23, I want you to sing through them rather than, than just King of glory. I want King of glory shall come in. OK, we're aiming for it as if we are coming in. <laughs> Thank you for that, Rob. Rob has said Ben is one man messiah. I, I, I do like the hashtag, although I do think it could be quite easily misconstrued. <laughs> As <laughs> somebody said on uh, on Twitter yesterday, yes, he's certainly not a very naughty boy. Anyway, well done. Uh, so, and the King of Glory shall come in is bars 24, 25, 26. And just make sure these little twiddles here are beautifully placed and very, very uh, delicate. And the King of Glory shall come in. Bearing in mind, as I say, that Baroque music is very, very decorated. Um, then bar 29, just this wonderful moment, which is very, very English. Remember that, that Handel moved to England, loved it, decided to stay despite uh, uh, having a job elsewhere. And he really did throw himself into the English choral tradition. And this little bit, where well, the Lord of hosts is just pure Pelham Humphrey, Henry Purcell, and so on. So enjoy this little moment. The Lord of hosts, and then the Lord of hosts. Just make it lovely and broad and rich and enjoy every moment. And then over the page, the letter C. Um, uh, letter C. We get, he is the king of glory, he is the king of glory here. So at this point, the choir is united. The first and second sopranos are singing together and we are singing who is the king of glory here. And just be careful at C, because um, Handel's really sneaky. The first time it is, he is the king of glory. So the first two notes are the same. And then it goes, he is the king of glory. He is the king of glory. So the first time it's two A's and it's B flat A, B flat A the second times. Be careful with that. And I'd also like you, please, to make... Uh, every time you sing this one, please, um, this He is the King of Glory, He is the King of Glory, He is the King of Glory, we're going to crescendo slightly into each one, uh, so we're building anticipation, OK? Um, you've got then bar 37 with the upbeat. He is the King of Glory, He is the King of Glory. I found you had to smile when you sing that, in order to get the nice bright sound, so make sure you're smiling all the way through this one, tenors. A smile that touches your eyes, OK? He is the King of Glory, he is the King of Glory. All right, fabulous. Um, he is the Lord of Hosts, he is the King of Glory. So, the next phrase that follows, you get an opportunity to stretch your sound out slightly, make it nice and broad. Um, let's have a look at D. Okay, an opportunity for the tenors to really soar. Be careful with the faster notes. So, yeah, do a lot of slow practice. It took me quite a while to, to work on that one. So let's sing that together from D, OK? After, after three or one, two, three. The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. All right, with a little smile at the end to keep it in tune. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and then, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory, of glory. That's OK. Now, bar 51. Of glory. That's a bit trickier. Let's just have a look at that. This is two before E with the upbeat. Of glory. Two, three, four. Of glory. All right, it's, for me, it's the leap down from the F to the A that caused me a bit of consternation. Okay, just make sure you're happy with that one. 
and mm. smile on the last few notes there. He is the King of Glory. He is the King of Glory, building intensity. The Lord of Hosts, the Lord of Hosts, the Lord of Hosts. That's all very nice indeed. Um, lots of melisma. And just every time you're seeing galore, please remember, keep it relaxed. Drop your jaw. Um, and everything really on the last two pages, uh, all the all the feedback I've given you, all the all the notes apply to this. He is the King of Glory. He is the King of Glory. It's getting more intense every time you sing it. Um, and yeah, don't lose any of the intensity throughout this one. You know, it's a big, big movement. I was saying, all we like sheep needs to be light and frothy and not too big. This is a big sing. So make sure you give me everything, please, uh, and particularly in that that last page. All right. What follows then is let all the angels of God, but we'll come to that in a moment. So let's sing this one all the way through and just keep, as I say, uplifted. You can uh, you can get a lot of lift out of the word lift, lift up your heads. You know, you start the l slightly earlier and then you get a kind of springboard effect and it really helps your your uh, your music take off. So let's give it a go, shall we? Uh, <laughs> Monty Python references in the comments. Fabulous. So then uh, I don't need to give you notes because we've got an introduction. And remember, in when when we're singing Messiah, when we're performing this on May thirty first, you know, uh, from behold the Lamb of God to just before this movement is uh, is really very very dramatic and very dark and devastating. And this is the moment where people go, oh, how wonderful! So let's let's pull pull that out of our our, our hats and uh, and enjoy ourselves. Right here we go. Lift up your heads. Stand by your beds. Ladies, ready and who is the king of glory? Deep breath. This king of glory, who is the king of glory? Who is the king of glory? Lift up your heads, for ye he gates, and we lift up the everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in, and the King of Glory shall come in. Deep breath, and the Lord of hosts, and the Lord of Nice and big. And he is the King of Glory. 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 The Lord of us, he is the King of Glory. The Lord of us, he is the King of Glory.
Uh, this is the big one. This is the, the number that everyone's been looking forward to. This is your treat for all of these fast, furious semi-quavers is just to let loose and have fun. So obviously, we're in D major, this bright, bright key, this vibrant key that composers write in when they want everyone to sing at the top of their register and to sound good. It's a unifying key. Everyone sounds good in D, uh, which is why composers, when they want to celebrate, they write in D major. Um, and so when you come in, you're on the third of the chord. So do you know what I'm going to ask you to do? I'm going to ask you to smile, as always. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! OK, notice it's a smile that touches the eyes. It's not one of these. OK, when someone says smile, you go, I don't want one of those, I want one of those. Ha! Yeah, see the, the, the muscles here are coming up. It just helps everything ring, helps everything stay in tune. And notice I'm leaning on the first note. I'm not accenting it yet. That comes later. I'm giving it a lovely broad sound. Hallelujah. And the three notes that follow are slightly lighter. Hallelujah. 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 OK, such a fantastic shape. Just be careful not to overemphasize every single note. Think about where the strong notes are and lighten everything else. All right, you are. Don't worry, you're going to get a chance to really let loose in this movement. Should we sing from uh, from your first entry, please? Tenors, any basses here? There's your note. Altos and sopranos ready from bar four, two, three, four. so much fun to sing. I remember this was the first bit of handle I ever learnt as a tenor. Uh, sitting uh, there in the tenor section of the Haven Youth Choir, um, being presented with this and thinking, first of all, this is quite hard actually, but oh, what fun. Uh, okay, so let uh, went out uh, bar eight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Uh, again, lovely, lovely, bright sound. Be careful coming down the scale, all right, everyone? Um, because, of course, uh, it's very easy to go flat coming down the scale. Same again, as I said before, lean on the strong notes, lighten the notes that are supposed to be lighter. And then there's this thing I've been saying to everybody, if, you've, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, hallelujah, hallelujah, try and sing it a slightly different way each time. And one thing that I said to everyone in lockdown last year is sing it for a different person that means something to you. All right, so when you do sing uh, the same thing over and over and over again, as you do on the next page, make it mean something different each time and you'll get that wonderful drama and that wonderful excitement that Handel wanted. Now anyway, we were, we're skipping ahead slightly. Bar 12, we sing in unison. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. OK, that's with everyone, including the orchestra. It's a big moment. Make it nice and grand. Then some bright fireworks. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And then here, just be careful. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Now, if you are a, uh, a, a lady tenor and that's too low for you, stay up with the altos on that G. But everyone else, please, come down to the lower note. Just be careful of the pitch. If you've been up singing all these high notes, suddenly when you're down towards the bottom of the range, it, it can lead to it going slightly flat, so just be careful there. Um, bars 19, 20, 21, good opportunity for you to try this note uh, that I've been saying to sing it differently for different people. Um, OK. Then, from letter B, we start this amazing section, and uh, and having recorded the entire thing, um, this was one of my favourite sections, actually, with all these just these bright little hallelujah, 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 you know, just being surrounded by um, this wonderful, wonderful bright uh, bright sound, and the and the key of D major, which is which, as I say, it it is associated with celebration. So to have all these different tunes going on at the same time is so clever so from b it goes i'll do this slowly sing with me if you know it so from letter b it's one two hallelujah 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 for the lord god omnipotent reigneth hallelujah 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 That 
last bit, by the way, the hallelujah. Enjoy every millisecond of that. It's a wonderful, wonderful phrase. Now, you'll have noticed there's nowhere to breathe. There really isn't. And so breathe where you need to. Take your time. Um, try not to all breathe at the same point. Try not to, to all breathe in bar 25 if you can avoid it. Um, try and breathe earlier. I'd rather you leave a full crotchet beat out. Maybe one of the crotchets in bar 24. Uh, maybe in bar 26 you could leave out uh, potent. Um, you know, whatever suits you. Or even one of the hallelujahs and take a breath that suits you. Don't snatch the breath, take your time, uh, and everyone else will cover that, all right? Um, so that's that that wonderful section. Enjoy it, it's a lot of fun. Um, let us see. The kingdom of this world, we become trumpets. Don't forget to bring the dynamic down here. And then it stays quiet, he's become, and then suddenly, the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and of his Christ. And I'm going to ask you to come off there as if you were singing with the basses at letter D. And don't forget to smile. Let's sing from the kingdom, please, tenors. This is the, the beat before letter C. Oh, one, two, three. The kingdom of this world. Then we start this little fugue moment. Just make that big and chunky, all right? Uh, uh, the, the Yorkie bar, as it were, of tenor singing. Make it just really, really good and chunky. And then, and he shall reign forever and ever. Here we are just decorating the main tune with a counter subject of the fugue. So just make sure we're not over singing there because the big news is in the altos. And then similarly in bars 49 and 50, just before letter E. Um, and he shall reign forever and ever. OK, uh, again, we're just decoration. Chris has said, do you want rolled R's? Yes, please. Um, but don't overdo it, OK? I don't want to shall rain. Uh, a little roll. And he shall reign forever and ever. And he shall reign forever and ever. It's entirely up to you, um, but don't overdo it. Uh, bottom of the page, bar 52, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each time it's going to mean something different to you. Uh, uh, you know, a, a loved one, uh, a joyous experience, something that makes your heart sing. Every time you sing something over and over and over again, it's a different thing each time. And really, the next couple of pages are quite straightforward for tenors. Just a lot of fun. Keep the energy. When I was singing this, I was punching the air. For, uh, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. OK, something physical to help you feel that beat land uh, may, may, be, uh, may be useful to you. And then we're on to the last couple of pages of this King of Kings. When we're singing these long notes through, uh, this is bar 74, 75, 76. And Lord of Lords. Sing all the way through to the end of the note. Don't let it die at all. In fact, if anything, gr don't grow through it, but keep it keep the intensity all the way through those five uh, five beats uh, and then the last couple of phrases king of kings and lord of lords king of kings and lord of lords that by the way this is bar uh, bar 81 to 85 that phrase is why Handel is a genius okay he understands if he did the same thing four times it wouldn't have the same impact the third time it's not king or of kings the third time it's King of Kings. And just notice as we sing past it, the impact of him changing it the third time and then bringing it back the fourth is amazing. It's just so simple and so powerful. And then just this last page, forever and ever, forever and ever, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, keep that energy going. And then the last, last couple of bars are low for the tenors but they've got to be really rich and fruity, okay? So here we go, we're gonna sing it all the way through. I'm gonna end up probably a couple of minutes late, so sorry about that, but enthusing about Handel well. <laughs> you can't blame me for being a couple of minutes late. And uh, so I'm just gonna press start. I'm not gonna stop it once it starts because we've got an introduction. Anyone who's here, please sing and enjoy yourselves. 
And uh, if you sat down, if you'd fancy standing up, you know, the king stood up when he heard it for the first time. I don't blame him. It was He was in the presence of something greater than even himself. So here we go, everyone. Hallelujah. And... Let's move on, everyone. Let's have a look at Worthy is the Lamb, which you'll find on page 196. And this is this is the big finish, everyone. This is handle, handing responsibility for the, uh, the, the wrapping up this incredible work to the choir. Um, and if you think about it, you know, the soloists don't feature a huge amount in this third part. We have bass, we have a little bit of alto and tenor, we have that wonderful, wonderful aria, I Know That My Redeemer Liveth, from the soprano, but it's the choir that is the, the star of the last third of this movement, of this uh, wonderful work. And this last movement really 
uh, with Worthy the Lamb and our men joined together. I mean, you, you could publish this as a work on its own. It's a huge, huge undertaking. Now, one of the great things, as I was saying yesterday and again on Monday, um, was that, is that when you sing this in a face-to-face -face choir, quite a lot of the time you get to this part and you've got no voice left at all. Uh, and I can put my hand up and say that's happened to me <laughs> as I've sung these movements. And of course, you can record this um, when your voice is feeling uh, is feeling good and you've had a chance to warm up uh, and and when we come to sing it then on May 31st it's going to be like the choir has infinite stamina which is uh, which is great another great advantage of SIC now uh, remember this last movement uh, is split into multiple sections again very forward-looking of Handel um, starting here on page 196 we've got this broad expansive start with this big chord and we sing And we want lovely big languid sounds there. OK, tall, tall sounds and really enjoying singing around that F sharp E D sort of area for tenors, which is right in the middle of that lovely, lovely, strong part of your voice. Um, and so make this lovely, as I say, broad and expansive. We then move in bar seven to the andante. <laughs> to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and blessing. And so this becomes much more punctuated, uh, much stronger. But of course, we're aiming for the important sounds. So let's not have to receive power. It's to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength rather than what some choirs would go to receive power and riches and wisdom okay so let's let's not overemphasize everything um let's let the orchestra punctuate that and aim for the strong sounds in each case uh, strength is obviously a nice opportunity to give us a broad sound because we're not singing two syllables so let's sing from to receive power and riches there from andante everyone all right how are we doing after three oh one two Three, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and blessing. Now, as we're rising through those last three, uh, three words there, honour and glory and blessing. Can you sing like it's the sun coming out from behind the clouds, tennis? All right. Honour and glory and blessing. You have a lovely ascending line. Um, the sopranos and uh, altos are descending whilst you are on the rise there. So make sure that shines forwards, OK? Shines through. Bar 12. Same again. OK, that first phrase is lovely and bright. And in the major, then we have a little, a little interlude in the minor. So this... And hath redeemed us to God. Just practice that a, a little bit unexpected. Um, just check you're happy with that bar. 15, 16, 17. And then to God by his blood. Nice and broad there. And then once again to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honour. Now that note is so, so important. OK, because you're with the altos there and honour. And with the rest of the choir, it makes this gorgeous. <laughs> Lovely tension and release. And so that note on, and honour. I just want you to make sure that shines like a diamond for me, OK? And blessing. Let's sing from letter A, then, to letter B tenors, OK? So from that worthy, everyone else, there's a bass A. There's the tenor E, alto and soprano. Let's sing from A, everyone. After one deep breath and one. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain And hath redeemed us to God To God by his blood To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength, and honour, and glory, and blessing. Great stuff. Remember, those last two notes there are the third of the chord. Blessing! OK, make sure they are nice and bright. OK, 
And then we start the blessing and honour and glory and power be unto him, be unto him. Um, so what I'd like to do actually is, as I did yesterday, let's sing from the beginning to there and then we'll have a look at this little, little fugy bit. Okay, so worthy is the lamb from uh, the beginning to uh, letter B. All right, everyone, so there's your uh, beginning note. So basses, tenors, altos, sopranos, quick change of headphones, and let's have these first two pages. All right, nice deep breath, everybody, and... Uh... <sighs> Did. Well done, everyone. That's so much fun. You see what I mean about just that little moment? And on! That's just glorious. Such lovely, lovely harmony. OK, so now, blessing and honour and glory and power be unto him. Um, so we have, what, six pages here. And I'll be honest, the majority of this is perfectly fine. Um, there are some definite, definite moments where you're going to need to be in, in, in good vocal form. You're going to need to have woken up and warmed up and spent a bit of time singing uh, before you attempt this. This is not something to put at the very start of your recording session, I would suggest. Um, towards the end, when you've, when you've got your high notes, but you're also in that lovely zone where you, where you can sing nice scales and they sound good. Now, uh, if you've not sung scales before, I would recommend, uh, as just part of your, really, as, as pr preserving your voice, looking after your voice, exercising your voice, scales are very, very, very useful. Sing them to things like bar and la and ma and me and so on. Don't necessarily sing them all to an ah and so on. It, it can be quite demanding uh, and you can end up uh, damaging your voice if you don't do it right. So I always say sing it to bar. It's about getting the pitch in the right place. And when you're singing, um, singing these patterns for ever, practice them with the dotted and invert dot. OK, because that really, really, really works. Um, let's have a look at it uh, from the beginning. And when we get to the fast bits, obviously, you'll, you'll, you'll know. Um, let it be here. OK, so this repeated D. Make sure you are being really, really fastidious and making sure the pitch stays exactly where it needs to be. Because one of the hardest things to do, as I'm fond of saying, is to sing the same note over and over and over again and keep the pitch where it needs to be. So smiling with the eyes really helps. Let's sing this opening fugue here, opening fugue statement uh, from B. Ready? After four, three, four. Blessing and honour and glory and power be unto him, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Great. Now, although it does have this da, 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 this repeated note, um, let's not continue that sort of hen-peck feel throughout. As soon as we come off that repeated note, we start to sing phrases. So, Pa be unto him, be unto him, that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. OK, after those repeated notes, we want to get a sense of two impulses per bar maximum. All right? Great stuff. Now, bottom of this first page here, page 198, we've got a... OK, a little bit of a modulation there to the dominant key. Just be ca careful with that. Throne, and unto the Lamb. Definitely helps to smile when you sing that. Um, be ready after that little phrase there in bar 32, and it ends. Be ready because in just a beat and a half in bar 33, you're back in with your forever. 
Okay, that's a whole lot of notes all crammed in quite close together. I would practice that slowly, sing each of those phrases to bar and be really happy with them before you have a go at stringing them together. So let's quickly do that forever and ever. This is bar 33 to bar. Ready? Three, four, one. And again, and one. Lovely. And now the next one. And again. Once more. Excellent. And then this. Okay, to bar after three, two, three. Good. Again, one, two, three. Splendid. Well done, tenors. Now let's try that. All, th uh, all three phrases from bar 33 still to bar for now. After one deep breath. Three, four, one. Ba, 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 Two, three. Ba, 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 Two, three. Ba, 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 Great. And I hope you're feeling, as we're singing these things through to bar again and again, the pitch is starting to sort of come together and, and actually come into focus. All right, so please make sure that you sing these through um, because the last thing you want is, is to smear these sounds. You want it to be bright and crisp and absolutely as Handel wanted. Okay, uh, another little runny phrase there is just uh, between page 199 and 200. A uh, big milestone there, page 200 of the score. Um, when we go from and on to the lamb. Just be careful we don't go and on to, okay? And on to the lamb, and on to the lamb. Sing that with me, three, four. And on to the lamb. Good, let's sing that to bar. <laughs> no pun intended. Slowly, three, four. Ba, 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 ba. And again. Ba, 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 ba. Now dot it. Ba, 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 ba. And again. Ba, 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 ba. Now invert it. Ba, 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 ba. One more time. Ba, 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 ba. Now with the words. And on to the lamb. One more time faster. And on to the lamb. Fantastic. So it's just about really focusing in on each of these phrases and practice them slowly, if necessary, breaking them up, and then you'll find it's a lot easier. Um, what follows then on page 200 is quite straightforward. <laughs> That's all okay. Um, now, bar 46, just watch out here. Okay, it doesn't run up by, by scale, there's a leap there. Blessing and honour, glory and power be unto him. Okay, maybe circle that, bar 47, that caught me out on my first take, had to go back and uh, and do it again. So just make sure you're happy with me. Blessing and honour, blessing and honour. It's the uh, second note there that'll catch you out. Um, and then really it's just uh, heads down over the next couple of pages to just have fun with these phrases every time it comes back. Uh, blessing and honour, glory and power be unto him, be unto him. Uh, then in the middle of page 202, we've got the fireworks going off. Blessing. Honour, glory and power be unto him. Which is great fun. I really enjoyed singing the tenor part there. Um, now, let's let's have a look at this last page. Uh, and there's no sugar coating it. This last page is some of the hardest singing in Messiah, without doubt. But if you treat it the same way we've treated all of the semiquavers in the learning so far, which is to say, sing it quieter and sing it lighter, it is it's very, very doable indeed. You've got to be happy with the pitches, so practice everything on this last page really, really carefully, uh, and then sing it through slowly. Sing it to bar, dot it, invert the dot, and then sing it lightly, okay? Let's have a look at this. Let's sing it to, to bar from letter E. I can't take too much longer because we've still got the arm in to look at, but let's sing it from letter E, okay? After two. One, two. Ba, 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 now when you get to that point in bar 67 you, you you're <laughs> that's that's the hard singing done if i'm honest everything that follows even the amen isn't as hard as that now when you're coming to sing these semiquavers 
What helped me is to sing it very slowly indeed. And remember, the first two notes, the repeated notes, are the strong notes, and everything else is lighter. So we sing, sing with me from bar 64 uh, with the words. Ready? One, two, four. Uh, sorry, one more time. And ever. I almost sang forever. So from and ever in bar 64. One, two, and ever, forever, and ever, forever, and ever, forever, forever. And that's enough there. Let's do it one more time. Dotted, please, from 64 uh, after two. One, Two, forever, forever, and ever, forever, and ever, forever, forever. Okay, splendid. Now, when we come to sing this quickly in just a moment, um, some of you will be perfectly happy singing it. Others of you will think, gosh, that's really hard, and that takes some practice, and that's entirely fine. Okay, this one took me... Uh, the, these last two moves, and this one in particular, took me longer than any of the other tracks to record, um, just because it's it's a hard movement, but it feels so, so good to get it in the bag uh, when it's done. So let's sing it through, and then we've got the Amen to finish with. So we're going to start on page 198, Tennis, where we left off, with a blessing and honour. I just need to find that place in the file, so give me just a moment. It's going to start. Don't worry about singing now. We're going to skip forwards. Yes, 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 marvellous. OK, now let's skip forwards. Uh, there we go. So let's have just the end of the previous section, and then we'll you please come in at letter B. Here we go. And honour and glory and blessing. And... Blessing and honour, glory and power be unto him, be unto him. Let's sit upon the throne and unto the land. Let's sit upon the throne and unto the land. Goodness me. Well done, tenors. Not an easy part at all. But if you work at it, put in the practice, honestly, it pays off. Very, very well done. Thanks, everyone. Now, look, we've got to have a quick blast through this Amen, because I see time is short. Remember, all of the teaching is there for you to watch and enjoy. Um, it's a rather epic session, Goonies t-shirt notwithstanding. Um, it is worth going through and practising with me from last year, um, because to be honest, the, <laughs> we may have changed, uh, but the notes haven't. So uh, go back and watch those if you need to. So just an over overriding note for this Amen is when you sing it, when you, uh, when you record it, have in mind the work that's gone into this incredible piece over the last year and a bit since we started Self-Isolation Choir. You know, Amen, meaning uh, we agree. You know, just make sure that we, 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 we capture the majesty uh, and, and the 
I suppose that the the huge enormity of this work in this last Amen. Okay, it's not just any Amen; it's the grand Amen to finish perhaps the greatest choral work ever written. Um, now, when you sing these words Amen, you're going to give me a lovely tall mouth sound. <laughs> Now, for the most part, this is a real contrast to the last movement, which was lots and lots of fireworks going off. This one, there are fireworks, but they're not till the end. To begin with, it's actually more of a stately procession. Uh, think of it as the like an Olympic closing ceremony, OK? Everybody walking past in a stately way. So as we come in here on page 204, we should get... Amen. Right, now you will need to stagger the breathing and please don't worry about that breathe where you need to our engineers are fantastic and as long as everyone isn't trying to breathe at the same time it's not going to show when we blend it all together so make sure you take a deep deep breath okay in fact the the, the more silent you can make your breath the deeper it'll be so use the base uh, the bass line here uh, from letter F to when you come in. Take a huge, huge breath and just sing all the way through. Um, lovely. And so you've got these little interjections. Amen. Amen. Just enjoy that lovely broad sound. Um, we've got another. We've got a great big statement of Amen at letter G. For the most part, it moves by step. It does have that little leap in the middle with the descending fifth and then up to a fourth. Worth practicing there uh, in bar 32, 33. And then over the page, page 206, um, we, we really are just uh, eyes on the prize here. And so there's some really, really nice phrases. Now, whenever you've got an ascending line, whenever we're going up in pitch, as you'll find on page 206 here, tenors. <laughs> As we're going up, remember, sun coming out from behind the clouds, uh, or even the sun rising here on a new dawn, on a new future. Letter A is a good place to look at, so it's a one, two, three. Amen. 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 All right, so lots and lots of lovely, lovely ascending phrases. Do uh, do watch out in bar 45. We, we finish on an E there, and then we've got to come in on the D below. It's a little bit tricky, um, but once you get that note, once that's locked in, um, it, it follows rather nicely, and lots of other people are singing the D around you. Uh, otherwise, we just proceed. A lot of it is moving by step, and it's just about keeping that lovely sense of line going through these, these pages whilst we move towards the end. Um, it's actually a lot of fun to sing this, and, and compared to some of the earlier movements, I don't want to say it's easy, um, but Handel is clearly, uh, he knows choirs, and he knows that you'll have sung really, really hard, and so he's given us something that sounds uh, sounds stately and lovely and isn't going to uh, cause us too much consternation. And then we get to the last page, tenors, and remember, I've gone through all the notes in the teaching. This last page here is just absolutely wonderful for the tenors. Uh, when you come in at the last note of bar 76, and we're leading towards this last, last section, which is all just uh, absolutely glorious. Let's sing, shall we, from the last note of 76 to uh, the, where are we, to the first note of bar 80. Okay, starting on the E there, last note of 76, amen. Give us a nice broad sound, or one, Two, three. Amen. Great. And nice bright note on the F sharp. Then we we start this descending line. And we sing. Coming in on that A is just the best feeling. Okay, now I'm not a real tenor. I have to sing that uh, in my alto voice. But those of you who have got a lovely, lovely top A, let that rip there. Have fun singing it. Um, I said the same to the sopranos. It's just a glorious moment on that top A in bar 81. And then 
heading for the end and have fun. All right, folks. So we need to sing it all the way through and then I need to let you go because we're very, very nearly through the, uh, the entire thing. So let's have some fun. Uh, oh, thank you so much for your comments, everyone. Norb says, Amen is a lifelong task. It, it, it is. And that's the thing. Messiah itself is a lifelong task. I don't know how many times I've sung it and conducted it. Now I've spent more time on this work than any other, without doubt. Um, and for me, I just feel like I'm just getting started. Uh, and I hope to be uh, in front of it and, and in it many, many, many more times. And so enjoy it. And this won't be the last time we sing it. Um, but it is the last time we're going to sing it today, everyone. So basses, there's your note. And everyone, please enjoy this magnificent Amen. Here we go. And. Two bars, deep breath, and... Deep breath, and... 